This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. Hello everyone, I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and today I wanted to share a story with you about a patent troll named Fortress Investment Group that tried to stop BioFire, one of the few biotech companies in the country right now making test kits from distributing their products. That's right. While there is a shortage of tests in the US and we're in the middle of a situation and a national state of emergency, a patent troll wants to stop one of the few companies getting the desperately needed test kits out there. This might, might be forgivable if this was a case of corporate espionage where one firm had worked diligently to make a test only to have it stolen and mass distributed by a competitor. But Fortress is not a competitor. It's not even a biotech company. But before we can understand how this scheme was supposed to work, it helps to know who SoftBank, Fortress Investment Group, and Theranos are. SoftBank Group is a holding company that owns a variety of major companies like Sprint, Boston Dynamics, WeWork, and Alibaba. They're worth billions. In 2017, SoftBank acquired Fortress for $3.3 billion. Among other things, Fortress invests in and acquires assets of companies going through bankruptcy. It's a bit like digging through an abandoned self-storage unit to see if there's anything valuable left over. One of the storage units that Fortress combed through was Theranos, the once up and coming biotech company founded by Elizabeth Holmes in 2004. Theranos promised to revolutionize patient testing by creating devices that allowed for mobile testing using as little as one drop of fluid. No need to draw large vials of blood or send samples to a lab. All sorts of tests would become as easy and convenient as testing blood sugar, they said with the same rapid results. Connect the device to the internet and your doctor could be remotely informed of your results and make treatment recommendations. In 2012, Theranos filed several patents that outlined how the devices were supposed to work. Collect the fluid, put it in a test packet, insert the packet into a machine that then reads whether the test is positive. A third device can then send the results to a doctor remotely. Sounds promising, right? Well, investors were fooled too. By 2014, Theranos had raised more than $400 million and was valued at $9 billion. But in 2015, John Carreyrou of the Wall Street Journal published an expose that detailed how the company was a sham. The devices didn't work and they had faked their data and used devices from competitors to cover up their failure. Carreyrou effectively took down a $9 billion company with his investigation. He published a book on the rise and fall of Theranos entitled Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley startup. You can get a free copy of the audiobook from Audible if you activate a one month free trial membership using the link in the description below. Your trial membership will help support our channel and what we do. By 2018, Holmes had been sued by the state of Arizona, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and was indicted for fraud. But what does this have to do with patent trolling? Well, in 2018, Fortress bought two patents from Theranos for their devices. More on the patents later. That brings us to today, where Fortress, using a shell company named Labrador Diagnostics, has sued for patent infringement over BioFire's, uh, tests. Let me say that again to make it clear. Fortress wanted BioFire to stop making and distributing the machine that reads the tests in the middle of uh, the situation that we're in right now. Fortress isn't a competitor. They aren't designing or manufacturing tests. Fortress bought a piece of intellectual property based on a design that never worked from a collapsing company after the founder was indicted for fraud. But because the patent was written broadly, if another company came along and fixed the problems Theranos couldn't overcome, Fortress could make it sound like infringement and try to get a payday. They waited for a victim, and now it looks like they've chosen to do this during the situation in which thousands of people need tests immediately. The patent could be invalidated during a trial, but no one can afford that right now. This is patent trolling.
The purpose of intellectual property is to encourage and advance the useful arts and sciences. It rewards creators and artists for their efforts and talent. But here, we have a company who bought a patent for a device that never worked as promised so they could file nuisance lawsuits and allege infringement in the hopes of getting a payday. They want to monetize litigation. To borrow a phrase from Judge Lamberth, instead of treating courts like citadels of justice, they are treating them like ATMs. They know that BioFire can't afford to let an injunction stop the release of tests. Heck, the public can't afford an injunction. Fortress is hoping to be a thorn in BioFire's side so that they can get a check and walk away richer. This is not what intellectual property protection is for. This is more like a mafia-style shakedown. They're walking into a store and demanding protection money for not destroying it. I would read the complaint to you, but frankly, it's 70 pages long, is poorly written, repetitive, and is unclear in a lot of places, so I will not put you through that. We found the patents, but I'm also not going to read from them because they're also very long and technical. But I'll show you an image that helps to illustrate their claim. This is the basic idea. You have a testing pack that combines the sample with a reagent that will react to the presence of whatever you're testing. You then insert the testing pack into another machine that reads the test and tells you the result. Multiple test reading units can be put together to form an array so you can read multiple tests at the same time. Fortress is now claiming that BioFire's tests infringe on this design because they involve collecting a sample in a testing packet and then inserting the test into an array of machines to be read. At trial, the two companies could compare devices, determine the similarities and differences, compare to prior art, which means looking at devices that existed before the patent was filed. There are even ways that the two devices could be similar without infringement, like if both devices license the same components from a third party. All of this would be done during discovery and trial. But BioFire and America can't afford to have an injunction preventing the making or distributing of these tests. We need them now. Now, I know some people might be thinking that Fortress Group could have a meritorious claim, and the only way we'll know is if the case goes to trial. And people have a right to adjudicate their claims before court. However, Fortress Group is notorious for their overly aggressive style of monetizing patents through litigation and filing meritless lawsuits. In November of 2019, Intel and Apple both sued Fortress, claiming their practices were anti-competitive and went against the core values of intellectual property law. As with all the other documents in this story, the lawsuit is very long and detailed, so I'm just going to read bits and pieces from the introduction as it helps explain Fortress' business model and how it affects technology companies. Intel and Apple bring this action under Section 1 of the Sherman Antitrust Acts and the Clayton Act and California Business Code 17200 at Sequitur, which is their unfair business practices law. Rather than promote the progress of science and useful arts, patent assertion entities, PAEs, including defendants Fortress Group, that aggressively pursue meritless litigation have long been recognized to harm and deter innovation. For example, one study estimated that patent litigation brought by PAEs in the United States resulted in expenditures of $29 billion in 2011 for licensing fees, legal fees, and other costs of responding to litigation. Another study found by looking at the impact on stock price that lawsuits by patent assertion entities from 1990 through 2010 were responsible for defendants losing half a trillion dollars. A central player in this emerging investment strategy is Fortress Investment Group. Fortress is an investment firm that went public in 2007. Fortress's shares traded at over $35 per share after going public, but one decade later, Fortress was struggling with poor returns and its share price had plummeted to around $5 per share in 2017. Fortress was acquired that year by SoftBank for $3.3 billion. 
One way in which Fortress has tried to turn around its performance and justify SoftBank's investment in it is through increased speculation on patent assertions. Intel and Apple bring this complaint to end a campaign of anti-competitive patent aggregation by Fortress and a web of PAEs that Fortress owns or controls. Rather than enhancing efficiency, Fortress uses aggregation to undermine it by creating a structure in which Fortress and its PAEs benefit by asserting weak patents, i.e. those that would never have been asserted by their former owners, in order to stretch the resources of their targets and increase the possibility that those weak patents will improperly be found valid and infringed, or the prospect that a target like Intel or Apple will agree to a license to resolve the threat posed by Fortress and its PAEs. Fortress and its PAEs acquire and seek to monetize meritless patents that never would have been asserted by their original owners, imposing a tax on the electronics industry that increases prices, decreases output, and ultimately harms consumers. Intel and Apple detail seven of Fortress subsidiaries, their wide-scale litigation, and their consistent losses in court. In a strategy that feels similar to what we've seen copyright trolls do, as soon as a case starts to look like a court may invalidate a portion of the scheme, Fortress tries to dismiss the case without prejudice. This means they avoid a court ruling that points out the flaw in their strategy and can avoid paying a judgment or the legal fees of the other side. This preserves their ability to move on to a new victim who may opt to settle and pay a license fee. As soon as one court starts to crack down on their shady practices, they just move to a different state with new judges. The scale of their operation means that even as courts invalidate patent after patent, they still have more to fall back on. We'll link to the full complaint on our website at lawfulmasses.com because Intel and Apple go into a lot more detail and provide plenty of examples. But today, we're talking about Fortress going after Biofire in the middle of this situation. Although Fortress has been accused of acting like a patent troll for years, this is something that shocks the conscience and feels more like profiteering. But to give you some sort of hope, after news of this lawsuit blew up, Fortress generously offered to license the tech to Biofire royalty-free, which would allow them to distribute tests. However, we don't know the details of what they offered. They may still request a license fee or plan to charge royalties on uh, non-Voldemort tests. This royalty-free offer looks like a face-saving measure to deal with the bad press because the lawsuit has little or no merit. However, they haven't dismissed the case, so this might not yet be over. Hopefully this will be resolved soon so Biofire can focus on what it needs to do to help our health workers on the front line. So what do you think about that? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. I also want to give a big shout out to Mike Masnick from Tech Dirt. His research was crucial to understanding this, and he always provides the original documents. Mike, you're a gentleman and a scholar. I also want to thank another group of people we couldn't do this without, our supporters on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.com slash law. Thank you to the following supporters in the month of March at the $50 plus level. Thank you to Wes Delge, Aspernari, Video Remonetized, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Spirit Bear, Jan Negray, Daniel Perez, Blackleaf, Joe Tyson, Benjamin Hightoff, Stephen, Ada, Cute Grills in Your Area, Longreach Jones, Zachary Cheney, Mullen PC, and Anders Thornfeld. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters who are scrolling on the screen in front of me. I will put some dog videos here for you in the outro. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I love you all.